Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, today I just wanted to update you, I was going to say relatively quickly but that's becoming a bit of a joke, um, about the way that I'm planning or now rather not planning. Um, I basically, I don't know when it was, about a month ago transitioned into a bigger notebook. Um, I've been using the A6 um, Leuchtturm, how do you say it? Oh, I've given pronunciation notes and I still can't remember. Anyway, I've been using those notebooks for years at this point. Um, this was my fifth one that I would have completed like fully properly. Um, I have all my other ones here, they're kind of dusty on the edges. But this would have been my fifth notebook. Um, but more recently, I think, it's not been working as effectively for me as it has done in the past. Um, I was kind of bored and a bit tired of it, I guess. Um, so I'll still label this one up as number five anyway, and then this one will be number six. I'll just carry it on. Um, but basically, about a month ago, I started transitioning into a bigger notebook. I just felt that the small book was becoming too constrictive. I felt like I wasn't really using it to... Um, I wasn't really... Like, I could have been doing a lot more and thinking a lot better with the spaces that I could have. I don't know how to explain it. Basically, I felt that the small book was beginning to hold me back, I think. And that transitioning into a bigger notebook might help me to think better, because more than anything else, more than being a planner, my notebooks are a space for me to think. I have aphantasia, which is the lack of a visual memory or the ability to, to think visually. Like, I can't see any pictures in my head. For the longest time, I thought that was like a joke or a turn of phrase, I didn't realise that people could actually see things in their head. I can't. All I have is my internal monologue. All I have is, like, words. Um, so when I'm thinking, and because I have a lot of brain fog from being autistic and chronically lethargic, and, like, it's, it's a whole thing, it means that I have a lot of brain fog and I struggle to think coherently a lot of the time, and it takes me a long time to think through things and to process things. So my notebooks, um, and I also use a digital journaling app, like, those are spaces for me to like empty my head. I've been talking to a lot of my other autistic friends recently about the concept of like your head feeling too full but simultaneously empty. And so it's literally the the no thoughts head empty meme but also head too full somehow and can't think straight. Um, I often feel like there's so much pressure in my head because there's too much in it and I have no way of processing the input or the data or the the information that's in there. And so it just sits around and builds up like a like a weird hoarder house full of newspapers and I can't do anything with any of it. Um, I, I don't know how that sounds, I hope it doesn't sound too weird, but that's kind of how it feels and I get a lot of headaches, <laughs> undersurprisingly. Um, so I recently transitioned into a bigger notebook, I don't know why this is here, um, and it's working a lot better for me. So since my last planner video was about my small notebook, I thought that I would now make a video updating you on the fact that I've ditched them. <laughs> um, I've given up. It got to a point where, I don't know if you can tell maybe, but the small notebooks were becoming so empty and so sterile, like I wasn't even filling bits in and I couldn't remember what I hadn't filled in, so every page is just full of like, I don't know what happened here, I don't know what I did this day. Um, and I had these planning pages. Um, you can go back and watch the How I Plan video if that helps. I probably won't talk about it too much. But basically I was doing weekly planning across two pages with like a, to or like a running to-do list and then I was habit tracking and it got to the point where not only were the journal pages that I used for emptying my head was I not motivated to do them but I also was really not motivated to every week sit and draw all this out like it started to become such a chore and it had never been a chore for me before so it was quite surprising to try and deal with with the idea of losing my motivation because planning and documenting and getting things out and written down and keeping them so that I have them to refer to is a big part of my life. Um, a big part even of why I illustrate and why I draw and why I have the motivation and the drive to do that is because I'm terrified of losing information because I have, I don't know if it's because of my head being too full and not being able to process things properly, but I have really bad memory issues and that's why I take a lot of photographs too because if I don't keep things, if I don't make things tangible, then I, I don't have them, like they go. Um, my working memory is bad and my long and short term memory are also bad, like it's, it's a whole it's a whole thing that I don't know how to even begin getting into, but I have a lot of issues with my brain space and my hard drive not working. <laughs> so my notebooks 
are really important to me because that's how I keep things and that's how I can go back and refer to things and that's how I process things and that's how I deal with my feelings and how I think things through. Um, and so, like, these are imperative to my existence. Like, I, I don't know how to explain it and I don't know how lame it sounds, but it's it's really important to me functioning. Like, I cannot function without my books. Um, and that's kind of the crux of the issue. So when the little books stopped working for me, it took me a couple of weeks to come to terms to, to be honest, because I've been struggling since March, which is around when lockdown started. So at first I thought, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, things are just absolutely ridiculous right now. Nothing is normal, if anything was ever normal to begin with, but things are worse. Um, everything is suddenly very strange. And obviously if you're autistic and with everything that happened, like it's all the routines go out the window, nothing is the same, nothing is how you know it's practice to be, none of the rules are the same, like it was a very, still is a very difficult time for us. So I was like, okay, maybe it's not the book's fault, <laughs> maybe I'm just going through a lot and I'm not dealing with anything, um, and that's why the books aren't working. But then time passed and I was like, I need to empty my head, but the books aren't working. So it's that was when I think I started to come to terms with the fact that maybe it is the book's fault, <laughs> um, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. I was like, I came to a point and I decided that potentially these were no longer working for me anymore. There's all these blank pages. I barely filled anything in. Again, here, I just don't even know what, what I was doing or what was happening. Like, I, was, I wasn't even filling in the habit tracking properly. I would just go back through the weeks and just fill in random X's. So that's like, that's an issue. <laughs> Um, I was sticking bits in but very half-heartedly, like it was, it was not good. And because I wasn't going out, I wasn't sticking a lot in. This is a shopping list for my neighbour. Um, like it was, it was, I mean, <laughs> this page for June speaks for itself. It's, it's not a good look. So I won't talk more about basically what I went through with it all because it was very, oh, um, it was a whole thing. But, but there we go, that's what happened. That's why I ditched them. Like it's, my writing wasn't even neat, that's very messy my heart really was not in it. I was just sticking things in and writing things down and filling up these small spaces um, and it wasn't even anything. It was just filling it for the sake of filling it so that I could be done with it, which is absolutely not how my systems are supposed to work. Like that was detrimental to me. Like it, it, it did not, it's not good. So RIP to the small um, Leustrom notebooks. They're they're gone for me now, for the time being at least. They didn't work for me recently, so I ditched. Um, what I did do, I had this whole palaver where I ordered the hardback A5 from the same company, um, and the grids were really dark, and it was this whole thing, I don't know if some people saw it on Twitter, but it was like this whole palaver where I just couldn't handle it. Um, I ordered one directly from them because when I contacted them, they told me that if I put the notes in the order box, I could ask for the lighter grids that they used to have. So I did that. Then there was some confusion over email about what I was asking for, I think, which is understandable because I think the person I was communicating with was obviously German because the company is German and so there was like a language barrier there. But we worked it out, it was fine and I understood. And then they sent the book out. But from, from order to arrival, I think it, it took a month, which if you run out of paper and you forget, like I often do, then that's quite a long time to wait. I don't know if that sounds very like 21st century brat, but a month is a while to wait for a notebook to come in the post. Um, and that was quite difficult, but the only way that you, apparently you can guarantee that you get the lighter grids is by ordering through them directly and asking specifically for them because the darker grids are a print error that they keep running into. And so a lot of the stock in different shops, in the UK at least, um, but I've also heard from European like followers and mutuals as well, friends who say that they've had the same problem and it ruined the notebook for them. Turns out it's a print error, if that helps anyone to know, if I've even explained it well. Um, but they can't seem to, to get it under control at the moment, it seems to me. Um, I even, when I was waiting for the book, I was so desperate for paper <laughs> that I ordered the same book I'd ordered from them from a few different places to see what would happen, and then I ended up returning them all, which had been the intention. I just wanted to see how bad the dark grids were, like how, how prevalent they were, I guess. Um, and they are extraordinarily prevalent, they're everywhere. You can't get a light grid to save your life unless you can go into a really big store that stocks a lot of the books and look look at the the sides um, and try and work out if it's the light grids or the dark grids. Um, I also do just kind of open the plastic and look at the corners. I'm only a bit sorry. Um, so 
in the end I have the hardback book but I'm not using it because it took a month to come and I was so desperate that I bought the softback. Um, in the original hardback notebook I ordered that started the whole upset about the dark grids, the grids were extremely dark. They were almost like black on white paper and that's very hard on my eyes. Um, I'm sure the people will be in the comments telling me that I'm ridiculous, but it was too hard on my eyes. It was it was really difficult to look at a hundred or a thousand little black grids um, when you're trying to think straight and you can never do that. So I, I wasn't impressed. But they did send the lighter grids, but it's still not as light as my original book. I don't want to go out of my way to explain it more because I feel like I sound ridiculous, but if people are interested in that, I'll make a video about it. And I'll, I have three examples of the different stage of grids you can get. Um, and I'm happy to talk about it there and show the the, the examples of what I mean, because I didn't bring those books to my desk for this video. Um, but I can explain it better if people want me to. So what I did in the end was I ordered a soft book and a soft cover book of the A5. Um, and it has like the medium grids, <laughs> that's what I'm going to call them. There are like the really pale old grids from a notebook I have from like 2017, which are like the best. They are so beautiful. And then they changed it and they are darker now even though they told me they were still lighter i was i think i meant a, a grid that was a lot lighter than they thought I, d I don't know how to i don't know so this is what i call the medium grid which is i don't love it as much as the light grids it still hurts my eyes a bit if i'm having a bad day but it's still a lot better than the dark grids like tm like the dark grids are so bad <laughs> Um, so in the end, because I was waiting so long for the book to come directly from them, I ended up using this temporarily and seeing how I felt about it. Um, and I ended up using it for so long that now I'm attached, I'm at home in this book. So I've kept the hardcover um, and I'll use it for, for other stuff or in the future, obviously. I'm not just going to throw it out or keep it. Um, and for now I will work in these soft covers because it turns out the soft cover might be better for my intentions than the hardcover just because it's more portable and it's lighter and there's less pages um, and because the books bulk up when you fill them with stuff especially if you stick things in like I do it means the the hardcover books get quite like swollen and then heavy and then it's like a whole you know it's a whole thing um, these books have something like 150 less pages than the hardcovers I think because these ones are around 130 123 um, and the hardcovers I think have over 200 pages if I'm remembering correctly which makes them very, very big, very heavy. Um, so I bought the soft cover because I was scared of the grids um, and I was tired and I couldn't think for, for weeks and I needed to be able to think and I can't think without the books. Long story short. Um, but now I'm using this and basically the whole thing is that I'm no longer really planning. Um, I have my future log as I always have done and I've added a, an extra page because now I think I'll have this book longer than I have my small books. Um, so I have a future log to write things down so I can refer to them, but I'm not weekly planning anymore. My key works in the same way, um, exactly the same way, so the breakdown for that is in my other video. I just copied it over. And what I do instead is I bought these checklists on Amazon. Um, they're really cheap and a lot of the time they're not cut straight, <laughs> so heads up if anyone thinks about buying them. If you're very perfectionist and you don't want to deal with that, then just so you know. Um, I've been using those as just like a running to-do list. Um, I know that I could just write it on the paper and then skip the whole pad thing, but sometimes when I am doing bits I just write on the pad and then I transfer it into the book later and that works for me because then I can carry my to-do list around. Um, essentially I think that planning in the small books in the way that I was with the weekly spread wasn't working for me anymore. Um, I use my Apple Watch as an autism slash disability aid and that has a to-do list in it. And I use that on my watch and it also is on my phone and my iPad and my laptop because I have Apple devices, they all connect up and then I can check my to-do list and access all my like aids and accessibility stuff like all, all across my devices, which ended up being a lot more effective for me in times of bad brain than planning on paper and having to remember to check the paper and keep updating the paper and set up the room for planning in the paper, like it just stopped working for me. Um, I hope you guys will still be interested in these books. Essentially now it's more of a journal or sort of like a commonplace book. Not in the traditional practice where you keep track of the weather and the moon phases, I guess, but more in the this is now a place for me to catalogue my thoughts, um, my plans for work, my the things I'm doing, the things I'm feeling to help me process those things, the things I'm learning, the things that I want to, to document that I was reading or learning or thinking or 
interacting with. Um, it allows me to stick in all my photos a lot better. Um, there's a lot more room for writing. I'm running a margin system where um, this is the small margin I draw with you. Someone asked me once why I have margins in my book and I was like, I don't know, I got taught to do them in school and I never stopped, okay? It feels weird to just start writing at the beginning of a page. So these margins are mostly meaningless. I can stick the numbers in them, which is helpful, but these bigger margins on the inside or on the, the, the right-hand side are working margins. So when I make a long note, I can then add to that note by writing in the margin which is helpful for me because my brain works in stops and starts and in funny sort of directions a lot of the time my brain works too fast for for the rest of me and so when i'm writing not only do i get really bad wrist pain um but it means that i often double back on my own thoughts somehow like i'd have two thoughts at once and i have to go back and add to to what i've thought and written and like it's i don't know how to explain it but that's what it is um it leaves me room to stick in my sketchbook pages which I couldn't really do in my small books so now I can document my work better because I mostly work digitally I don't work on paper much for my illustration stuff because I just can't bother for the faff and the, the uncleanliness of it um it allows me to stick in my sketchbook pages um and the other work stuff that I'm planning this is an article I read online that I really liked I thought it was really an interesting concept so I printed part of it out I have room to do that now this was another version of the same thing that I made to see if it would fit in the smaller books in any capacity because this is kind of as small as you can afford the writing to go and it just doesn't, it doesn't work which is a big part of what I wanted the new book for is that I just needed more room in general to do things um, I just felt that I didn't have enough room anymore like it wasn't allowing me to use my brain or to think to the best of my ability or, or as clearly as I could because I didn't have enough room for it um, so more sketchbook pages sticking in my checklists um, and then making notes about things in the checklist. It's quite simple, I think, quite intuitive. I can actually plan out pages and things. Um, I did that a bit in my old book, but it wasn't very effective. More pictures. Um, basically, this is, it's, it's like, I don't know, I think a commonplace book is almost the best way to go about it because it's a journal and it's a diary and it's a workbook and it's... Uh, I don't know, photograph album, you know what I mean? Like, it's, these are all plans for work stuff. When I write about or draw about my illustrations, it's mostly in these very sort of crude diagrams, like, because I I can't visualise anyway. So drawing out, like, a big, it just doesn't help me. Um, I stick in things that I get from shop orders or things that I found and as well I always have done. Um, this is the shop that my bracelet is from on Instagram. That's what they're called, you can find them. And it's just nice to be able to stick all my photos in and worry about it less. This is some plans for some work stuff again. Um, it just I just have more room to do things and to see things and to track the stuff I'm I'm doing and thinking. Um, another sketchbook page, more photos. Um, the nice thing as well is that it will also give me room to, this is as far as I've got in a month, is 39 pages. It will allow me to do things like stick in postcards when I go to places which I obviously couldn't do in my, my other books because there's no room. So what I used to do was pin my postcards to my wall. I have like a washing line system with postcards, but I've run out of wall space because I live in one room. Um, but now I can put postcards in the book and write about them when I go to places. It will just allow me to document everything better is the crux of it. Like that, that's it, that's the whole story. I can just think better now. Um, and so, very long story short, I moved into a bigger notebook because I felt that the small notebooks were holding me back and because I find myself less reliant on paper planning as I now use a mixture of digital and very brief checklists. That's it, that's the whole story. I'm still using the same pens, the friction ones. I know all about the sun thing, I've never had issue with it, but I am very careful. Um, and I still use the same, the same key, the same dot stickers. That's it, I think. That's it, that's the whole story. Um, let me know what you think. I hope you guys will still be interested in my planning system or my lack thereof, my, my notebook system, how I use my notebooks. Let me know. If you're not interested, I won't bother talking about it, I guess. Um, but this so far is working so much better for me. I'm really pleased with it. Every morning I wake up and I reach for the book to be able to, to write things down and to get my brains like waking up. It's like a a warm-up for my brain <laughs> um, and then I pick it up throughout the day constantly and it's really helpful for me so let me know what you think um, and I will see you soon